This is End Screen Noise. My name is Colin Dixon, founder and chief analyst at End Screen Media, and today is January the 5th, 2018. Netflix has started 2018 very brightly indeed. Investors drove the stock to an all-time high of $205.05 on Wednesday. And this was because two investment firms, Loop Capital and McCarry Research, both upgraded Netflix stock from neutral to outperform. And their justification for this? Well, both companies see Netflix as incredibly well positioned and without any credible competition. Remember, Disney, which is rumored to be positioning a service to take on Netflix, won't even launch that service for 18 months out into 2019. So are investors justified in putting this level of faith in Netflix for the next year at least? Well, in the US, probably they are. Um, US, US can, growth continues to be very strong for Netflix. They have 52.8 million subscribers as of Q3 2017, and that is an 11% year-over-year increase over 2016. And the company is doing some very smart things. They're now into the late majority, those people who come to services much later than the early adopters and they're doing things to reach that group of possible customers. Like for example, working with Comcast to put Netflix on the X1 set-top box. Uh, they're also work, they're on every single connected device that anybody would ever buy. You've always got Netflix. And the third thing they're doing here is they're really, um, uh, consumers are embracing connected televisions, and that is where Netflix just happens to be the strongest. So uh, things really do seem to be heading in Netflix's direction, and because of that, I'm expecting to see between 59 and 60 million Netflix subscribers in the US by the end of 2018. Now, internationally, I think it's a very similar picture. Netflix is growing extremely strongly, and that growth seems to be accelerating. They have 56.5 million subscribers as of Q3 2017. That's a 44% increase over 2016. Now, they're also doing very, very smart things in the markets in, in international arena. They are partnering with wireless and wired operators to help them with two important problems. One is to help them be found in areas where they're not quite as well known uh, as they are here in the US. And the second thing is in billing. Uh, many regions, they don't use credit cards very much, and so it's very difficult for them to bill. Uh, and so the operators can help them out with that billing, that billing problem. Uh, so they're also creating local content now, local content with global appeal. So for example, they created 6% with uh, um, in a partnership with Brazilian providers. Uh, and that, that show was extremely popular everywhere, even though it was in Portuguese. So as long as they keep on that particular path, a partnering with operators and lots of local content, I see them continuing to grow very, very strongly in international markets, possibly reaching 82 million international subscribers by the end of the year to give them a grand total of about 140 million subscribers worldwide. Are there any flies in the ointment? Uh, are there any clouds in this blue sky? Well, there are a few. They are spending a crazy amount of money, $8 billion on content in 2018. And not every show they produce is a hit. They recently canceled Sensei and Hemlock Grove, both of which were very expensive series and only lasted for two series. Um, but the thing is that even though they create some shows or movies that aren't very popular, they're still watched. For example, Bright uh, with Will Smith, which has just released, although it was panned by the critics, was still watched by 11 million, 11 million Netflix subscribers in the first week. Uh, so uh, they're, they're, they're obviously investing their money very smartly, and it doesn't seem to matter about those reviews. 
Now they're not doing so well in some markets, for example in India, they're only the fifth most popular service. And in Southeast Asia, well, they're really having a tough time competing with iFlix, which is much better targeted for, for viewers in that region. Uh, but the truth is there is still tons of room for growth in Europe and Latin America, which is of course where they're doing pretty well. Now there are some that say that Netflix model is unsustainable. This high spending on content, they only have one mechanism for monetization and that's subscriptions and massive growth, massive, massive drive for growth in international markets. They see this as just unsustainable. Well, clearly the majority of invest investors don't see this. They think it is, is sustainable. And that's why we're seeing, I think, investors investing so heavily in Netflix at the start of 2018. So a good year ahead, I think, for Netflix in 2018. And you can bet we'll, we'll be reporting on how they do here on End Screen Noise. We'll see you again next time.